Hey y'all and welcome to episode 88 of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. My name is Kay and this is my YouTube channel where I chat about all of my knitting and crocheting crafting adventures. Today is Wednesday, February 19th and it's a, such a noisy morning outside. So we will see how much background noise there is. There have been dogs whining, dogs barking, the street sweeper truck just finished going by. <laughs> Not my dogs making noise. My dogs are right outside this door sleeping. My dogs are behaving themselves. Neighbors' dogs, not so much. So it's a very noisy morning here in the neighborhood. I think we need to invest in new windows for our house. I have no clue if that would help, but it just seems like we hear so much noise in this house. I don't ever remember any house that we've lived in before hearing so much outside noise. So I feel like we need new windows. I don't know. I don't know if you know if that would help, let me know below. <laughs> but anyways, that's not what you guys are here for. You're here for some knitting. So today I have a new design to share with you guys that has been released since the last episode. I do have a finished object, couple of works in progress. We are going to announce some giveaway winners and I think that's it. Oh, I did receive something in the mail for the Stash Busters Cal. So I will show you guys that prize in just a moment. Um, first, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as The Crazy Sock Lady. And we do have a group for this podcast on Ravelry. If you're over there and you hit the groups tab up at the top and search Crazy Sock Lady Podcast, it's gonna pull the group up for you. There's always some knit-alongs. Sometimes there's giveaways, swapless -swap swaps, scrappy Sunday chat all kinds of stuff over there. If you haven't already joined us, head over and do so. There will be links to all of the places that you can find me right down below this video, as well as show notes, links to shops, project pages, all of that is down below. So first up today, just a reminder that we do have the Stash Busters Cal for 2020 going on. And I'm co-hosting this with Julie from Twin Stitches Designs podcast. So you can head over into both of our Ravelry groups and enter into both of those for double the chances to win. We're both gonna be drawing from our separate threads, so you'll get a chance to win prize and prizes in each group. And all of the rules are listed in the chatter thread, and then I did do a separate video here on YouTube going through all of the information on the cow. It's basically use your stash, but all of the details are in that video, so I will link that below for you guys if you want to see what the Stash Busters Cal is all about. So the prize that we received, part of it is already in the chatter thread. If you go to the chatter thread for the knit along, I have all of the prizes that have came in so far listed in there with pictures if there are pictures that can be shared of the item. So this one is part of it is already listed. This is from Adore Knit and they have donated for quarter one and then for quarter two as well. But right now we're just chatting about quarter one. So they've donated that prize, $15 gift certificate. And then they also sent along a couple of sets of progress keepers. So they've sent three sets. Some cute dangly ones there. And then just some regular circle ones, which are some of my favorite or ones like that. So there's the first set, second set, and then a Doctor Who one. Turn it around there. I love the color of those, that blue. Oh, I have it upside down. <laughs> that would be helpful. There's the Doctor Who set. So they've donated three of these as well. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm gonna split them up between quarter one and quarter two. I'll decide and I'll post pictures of what goes for quarter one and then set the others aside for quarter two. But I'm gonna split those between the two since they offered a gift certificate for first and second quarter. And then they also, put in their card here that they want to offer a coupon code to you guys and it is 25% off 
with the code crazy sock lady and that's good until april 1st so i will be sure to put the link to their shop down below as well as the code if you guys are looking for some stitch markers and progress keepers you can head over and check out adore knit now for the new design that has been released i have released since the last episode the mahogany run socks this is one of my favorite patterns I've done. It is so much fun to knit up. It has some eyelets, some ribbing. I love how the ribbing at the top feeds into the ribbing down here. Definitely one of my favorites. So I did do a video here on YouTube chatting more about these, the inspiration behind them. So I will link it down below if you want some more chatter about the Mahogany Run socks. But this is available on Etsy and Ravelry now. I will link it down below. The yarn that I used for this one is by Breaking Yarn in their Breaking Princess colorway. And they have given a coupon code for me to share with you guys and it'll get you 15% off in their shop with Crazy Sock Lady. That's the code. So everything will be linked down below for you if you wanna head over and check out their shop. This is a very fun, very bright, vibrant colorway. That was a lot of fun to work up. And this pattern, one of my testers did it in self-striping and it looks so good in self-striping yarn. So I think this is gonna be for my March, Desert Misty Dye Works socks. I'm gonna do Mahogany Run socks. So yes, I wanted to share that with you guys. And these sock blockers are from Burning Impressions. They were a custom sock blockers that were a gift from one of the ladies in my knitting group in North Carolina. So now finished objects. I only have one. I am so happy <laughs> to say that these socks are finally done. Finally. So glad. I feel like I worked on these for forever. I didn't even work on them for a month. Started them January 24th, but I just felt like they took forever to get done for some reason. So these socks are for Wyatt, my youngest son. And they're out of Knit Picks Felici in the Spring Blooms colorway. I knit them on US 1 2.25 millimeter needles, cast on 56 stitches, did a slip stitch, heel flap, and gusset, and then a basic toe that the instructions for the heel flap and the toe can be found in any of my sock patterns that are on Ravelry or Etsy. He's going to be very excited. He doesn't know that I finished these. I finished them last night right before I went to bed because I was determined to get them done so that I actually had a finished object to show today <laughs> because this is it. I've been so hard at work on new designs that I just really feel like I'm lacking in, in other projects. So these are done. So glad they're done. I don't think there was anything else that I wanted to say about those. But I have three works in progress to share with you. First up, something you guys haven't seen in a while, and there still hasn't been a ton of progress made on it, but I wanted to show it because it is at a different point than it was the last time you saw it. And I've got it in my Fringe Supply Co. I think this is the town bag. Definitely one of my favorite bags. It's great size, has pockets very sturdy. And then here I have my olive leaf pullover. And let me show you the yarn first. So the yarn that I'm using is Malabrigo Sock in the Impressionist Sky colorway. That is very accurate color representation there. I actually have my lights out today. I haven't recorded with these in a while. I just normally do natural light because it's a lot to set these up every week and break them down because my office is not big enough to have them up all the time. But I'm getting ready to record some super exciting tutorials. And I wanted to try recording the tutorials with these lights. 
So I thought while they're out, I'll go ahead and use them. But this is very accurate. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous blue. And let me set this down here so I can pull the sweater out. So here is the sweater. Look at that blue. Oh my goodness, I love it. So I think the last time I showed it, I was just ready to join to work back in the round. I had finished doing like the back and forth that was for the arms. So I've joined back in the round and now I have started the pattern along the bottom. Not too much to show yet, but it started, it'll match. I don't think I, I don't know if it'll match identical, but I think it's the same pattern that goes down the sleeves. So yeah, I've made progress. I feel like this was a super easy section because I was just knitting round and round and round. Um, I am, or I did, okay, I should say alternating skeins. I did not alternate in the back and forth section because that's just not very much fun. Um, I did helix knit alternate that method down through here where it was just plain stockinette. But now that I'm back down to doing a pattern, I am not alternating again. So I always think you should alternate with hand dyed skeins of yarn so that you don't get color blocks. But I'm hoping since I did one skein throughout this section, alternated through here to blend this next skein in. And then I should have plenty in this second skein to do the pattern section at the bottom. So at least the two will be well blended together. I'm fine with it. So yeah, I haven't tried it on yet, but I think it looks, looks good and looks like it's gonna fit well. There's supposed to be a little bit of positive ease, which it looks like there should be. So I, just at this point that I'm at now with it, it's not a mindless TV knit. The patterning at the bottom is not hard. It's just that I have to follow the chart and pay more attention. So I, it's just finding the time to sit down where my mind can really focus on that pattern. That's kind of keeping me from getting a lot of work done on it. I am using my Knitter's Pride Zings interchangeable set. And right now I have this on a US 7 4.5 millimeter. I am using the needle sizes that the pattern called for. And that is work in progress number one. So the second thing that I've been working on are my February Desert Vista Dye Work socks that's in my Daisy Girl and Company bag. And I've been trying every morning, kind of my morning routine has been, I get up, get myself a little bit ready for the day. When I come downstairs, I sit down and get some work done as far as like I catch up on YouTube comments, Ravelry group stuff. And then I work on these for about 30 minutes before I go make some breakfast. <laughs> So these I'm doing two at a time. Make sure they're not going to be too tangled up here. Okay. There we go. So I'm doing them two at a time and I'm doing the heel toe do -si do sock pattern. I just love these little chevrons and self-striping. It just brings me so much joy to work that up. I just think it's so fun. So I've got these on a Chalgu 40 inch cable, US 1, 2.25 millimeter needles. And I'm putting my markers every 10 rounds so that I can easily count to see, cause I always do 60 rounds for the leg. And then I marked for the heel. So I'm going to do a true afterthought heel, cut in, no waste yarn, 
So that's the plan with these. And then I'll do, I can't remember how many rounds I normally, I'll have to look at a project page. I think I normally do like 50 some rounds for the leg when I do an after, or not for the leg, I'm sorry, for the foot when I do an afterthought heel. So the, oh, the colorway. Yes, let's let you know the colorway. So the colorway is Alaska Thunder Zombody by Desert Vista Dye Works. I'm using my little needle minder here that was a gift from one of the ladies in my knitting group. And that's how I do it with two at a time. I just put one sock in there. It just kind of holds that first sock a little secure in there so that your stitches don't fall off the needle when it's in the bag. Okay, last work in progress is a new cast on. I have been keeping this in my purse and this is in an adorable bag from Knit One and Sew so Two. This is my first time getting a chance to use this bag since I purchased it and I'm obsessed with it. It is the perfect size to stick down in my purse and always have a sock with me that I can work on. So I'm loving this, it has some pockets on the front, just opens up that way and then you can open it up, have it down inside of your purse and pull your sock out to work on whenever you have a couple of minutes. So here it is, see I've got plenty of room in here. I've got a cake of yarn and I have a little notions tin down in the bottom there that has some stitch markers, a little pair of scissors, all that stuff that you need. The yarn I'm using is, let's see what the colorway name is. Yes, that's what I thought. Um, yarn Cafe Creations in the Shining colorway. And these are socks for Eric. He likes the Shining. I thought he would like, like these socks. So here's what I've got so far. It is a pretty busy colorway. There's a lot going on. And I had started, I posted on Instagram that I had started these and I was gonna do the socks for dad pattern, which is one of my patterns on Ravelry or Etsy. I did the cuff and I started it on the pattern and this yarn was just, there's so many speckles and the, like kind of the variegation going through it that the pattern was just totally hidden. You couldn't even see it and I thought, why well, don't want to spend the extra time doing a pattern when you can't see it. So I ripped the entire sock out. <laughs> I, and I kind of thought like I could tell the yarn had a lot going on. So I thought the pattern might not show as much, but it definitely didn't even show as much as I thought it would. So I just ripped it out. And then I did a knit two purl two ribbing on a US one 2.25 millimeter needles doing a magic loop on 32 inch cable and 64 stitches <laughs> did 20 rounds of the ribbing and then i am doing a ribbed sock just because i do think they fit very nicely so again the yarn is so busy so it's kind of hard to see any ribbing or anything in it but i'm just doing a knit three purl one so a three by one ribbing for the leg and then i'll carry that on to the top of the foot as well i think so these will be getting some work this weekend. Austin has, I think he's playing with two teams again this weekend. So this is what I'll be working on. <laughs> See how much I can get done because they are the only, they're not a completely vanilla sock because they are a three by one rib, but they're mindless enough that I don't have to really focus on a pattern or think about them too much. So they'll, good bit of work done this weekend. So I did not receive any mail since the last episode other than the progress keeper sets that I showed earlier for the knit along. That's all I received. And I, we have some giveaway winners to announce, but I've been realizing as I've been recording that I did not go through and actually draw those winners. So they are the winners from the previous episode from episode 87, where I drew for the Sarah Craft sock pattern and hat pattern that she so generously donated to the podcast for a giveaway. 
So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put the names of the winners right along here. I drew these, or I will draw these, I haven't drawn them yet, from the comments that were left on episode 87. So I'll put those right at the bottom here. If you are one of those winners, please get in touch with me at crazysockladypodcast at gmail.com. And that email will also be down below this video where all the things are that you can find me. Um, just email me and let me know your Ravelry name so that I can get that information passed along to Sarah. And congratulations to those two winners. Thank you everybody who participated in that giveaway. I always love when there are a lot of comments because it's so fun to go through and read and get to interact a little bit and hear your guys' thoughts and what you're working on and all of that stuff. I think that is pretty much it for the knitting today. A shorter episode, but like I said, I've just had so much going on with new designs. I'm working on quite a few of them and I'm very excited about them, um, but it's just, I haven't had a lot of other knitting time it's all been design stuff really. So a little bit of chatter if you're interested to stick around to hear what's been going on this past week. Of course there's been basketball. Austin have had a couple of games last Saturday and they did good. They won one, lost one. So evened out. It was a nice, nice day. And then of course we've had school ball as well. They are still undefeated. They had a game last night. So they are eight and oh right now. And they have one more regular season game tomorrow night. And then we move into the playoffs. I cannot believe they're undefeated. Like it's blowing my mind that they are eight and oh right now. So he's obviously very excited. And so is his team. It was Valentine's Day this past Friday. We didn't do anything. We normally don't. We get each other a card, but we're not huge on celebrating Valentine's Day, I guess. So we stayed at home on Friday to avoid the crowd and Eric made some pizza and we just spent the evening with the boys. So that was a good, fun family evening. And then basketball on Saturday, Sunday. So I have been itching to do some projects around the house. I've been itching since we moved in to do a lot of projects around the house, but little by little we've done things. Um, if you followed for a while, you know, we did the flooring and most of the downstairs, the kitchen had tile that didn't need replaced. But so we've done the flooring, replaced the kitchen sink, like little things here and there, uh, you know, painting an accent wall. This past weekend, I got the itch again. So we took down the handrail on our stairs. It had been painted, goodness knows how many times. And the paint that they used before we moved in in this house is the worst paint ever. You touch the wall and the paint falls off, I feel like. You can't clean it, you can't wipe anything off the wall or paint comes off, it's just insane. So that handrail from where the boys are constantly, you know, touching it and it would just get so dirty because it was a light colored paint. And then when I would try to clean it, the paint would come off so it looked a mess and I was over it. So we took that down, Eric sanded it down, stained it, it still needs a coat of poly something. I don't do this kind of stuff, so I don't know. Um, it needs a coat of something over the top of it before it can be put back in the house. So he'll probably do that this weekend. And we did like a matte black for the fixtures that hold the handrail up. Then we have light covers on the stairs. We did those in matte black as well because there's two little stair lights as you're going up the stairs. So I have just this whole list of projects. We did another accent wall. We did an accent wall in the living room, wanted to do two, but we'd only gotten one done and just had never gotten around to buying more paint to do the second. So we did that. We spent Sunday, we had a little Lowe's and Home Depot date. <laughs> Went to both and got some stuff we needed to get a couple of the projects going some sample paint for the downstairs bathroom. I think that's gonna be the next room that I tackle. The flooring was redone, so now I wanna update fixtures, paint the walls, put a new mirror up. So we got the mirror for that as well. So that was kind of our Sunday. And since Austin right now, unless he helps out another team, his normal team is only playing on Saturdays. So we should have Sundays to kind of start working on some projects around the house. So that'll be fun. I think it'll be fun. I don't know that Eric thinks it'll be fun because he's the one that does the most of it. <laughs> I 
I just come up with the ideas and pick out the stuff, which I think is fun. I like decorating and all of that. So that is pretty much what has been going on, but I will see you guys again soon. Until then, happy knitting. Bye.